My name is Gary Owen, and you are watching and listening to The Gary Owen Show. So thank you for tuning in. I promise you, you're going to have 20 to 25 minutes packed of great, valuable information. And today, I have with me a very special guest, Miss Jackie Colucci. And Jackie, let everybody know who you are and where you're from. Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, Jackie Colucci here. I live in Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens and uh, I'm an agent with Owen Insurance Group. And Jackie just got back from, I believe it was North Carolina. Jackie, what happened? That special <laughs> event in North Carolina. <laughs> well, I went uh, to visit my daughter who had her first baby, my second granddaughter, and I spent a few weeks helping her learn to learn being a mom. <laughs> it's amazing, right? 29 years old, a grandmother already. That's phenomenal. Uh, but anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the top 10 FAQs. So uh, questions about Medicare. And it's so apropos because we are in the month of October. And October is what, Jackie? Annual election period, so, also known as open enrollment for Medicare. Yes, it's a Medicare open enrollment period. So we're going to go through 10 questions. Uh, and uh, Jackie's going to ask me... The first question, I hope. Gary, when should I start thinking about Medicare? Well, good question, because it really depends on your age, it depends on your life event. So the very first thing is if you're 63, you should start thinking about Medicare because it's due to IRMA, not Hurricane IRMA, but IRMA, income related monthly adjustment amount. So your income, if you're single making $85,000 a year or less, or you're married filing jointly, which is $170,000 a year or less, your premium is going to be roughly one thirty-five fifty dollars for 2019. So they go back two years. So you should probably talk to your CPA and find out what you can do about your income because your Part B premium and your Part D premium will be based on your income. Um, also, I'd say that if you're 64 and three quarters years of age, uh, if you're not taking Social Security, some people at that time you know, want to defer their Social Security to FRA, which is what? Full retirement age, which for most people is 66. So if you're not taking Social Security, it's not going to happen automatically. So you're going to have to pick up the phone, get on the computer, uh, and uh, contact your local Social Security office to enroll in your Medicare Part A and B. And then the third thing is, is if you're retiring, let's say you're working beyond 65 and you're 67, 70, 75, whatever the age may be, it's your first time enrolling in Medicare. So then you uh, contact uh, Social Security and enroll in your Medicare Part A and B. And then you also have a guaranteed issue period at that point in time as well. So those are the three reasons why you should be thinking about Medicare at what stages in life should you be thinking about Medicare? And I promise you, you're going to have questions about that. And that's why you want to call the professionals at Own Insurance Group so we can answer those questions that you have. Because trust me, there's a lot of them. And if you call Medicare, by the way, you'll be getting the Medicare 2020 book if you're over 65. You may not. But uh, it's, it's great if you can't sleep at night. Uh, and even insomnia, pick up the book and the 119 pages will put you to sleep pretty quickly. Or there's actually 20 pages that I refer to my clients that we speak about uh, that's most effective that you should know about. Uh, but anyway, Jackie, I'm going to ask you question number two. What are the late enrollment penalties and how do they apply? Well, that's a very good question. A lot of people don't even know that there are penalties if you don't enroll in Medicare Part A and B when you are eligible. Ouch! Uh-huh. Yep. They find out the hard way and are very, very upset. Now, that does not mean you have to pick what plan you're going to take for a supplement. I had that question yesterday. You have to enroll, enroll in Medicare Part A and B when you're eligible, which is going to be before your 65th, 65th birthday, three months before, the month off, and three months after. If you don't, you have a 10% per year penalty that you have to pay in excess of your Part B premium when you take it. Furthermore, if you don't enroll in Part B when you are eligible, 
and you don't have other coverage, because that would be a good reason not to enroll in Part B is if you have employer group coverage, for example. And if you don't do that and you have no insurance whatsoever, then you have to wait to enroll in January with an effective date of July 1st of the following year. And what period, what SEP, special enrollment period, is that called? Special enrollment periods refer to all of the um, exceptions that can be made for you to be able to enroll in Medicare Part A and B, or B specifically, yep. um, outside of the open enrollment period. So it's not just once a year. So for example, if you move to another location of the country, or even another county, or um, you have, uh, or your insurance drops you, <laughs> or many uh, other one, there's about 10 to 15 SEP, special election periods. And it is our job to sort out which one you can qualify for. There's definitely not a flat answer of yes, you can or no, you cannot. The answer to can I enroll now is it depends. Let's look for which of the categories you can fit into. And who should they call if they have questions, Jackie? Well, of course, they call the experts. Owen Insurance Group in Stewart, Florida is our headquarters, although we have agents and agencies throughout the state and I believe some other parts of the That's country. Right. And, and what happens if they need someone who is bilingual? Ah, ah. that's where I come in, especially, especially. I speak fluent Spanish. Si necesitan cualquier tipo de atención, no duden en llamarme, estoy a su servicio. I'm always at your service. Don't hesitate to call. Um, I, that is my specialty and my passion. I do this job because I want to. Trust me, it is insane. <laughs> but it's fun. It's a, and I, it was my choice. So I love what I do and I'm here to help. And by the way, also Jackie, about Part D, uh, what's the penalties for somebody who doesn't roll in a prescription drug plan? That is um, even steeper. It's a 1% per month that you did not enroll when you could have or should have enrolled. And that is carries through for life. But 1% of what? It's 1% of the average cost of a Plan D premium nationally. So at this time, the average is $33.50. $33 you can have plans that cost more, plans that cost less. That's the average. So the um, rule says that every month that you missed, enrolling, you're going to be paying $3.50 more for every month. So a lot of people will say, you know, Gary, I don't, you know, we don't take drugs. Right. I'm not going to enroll in Part D. And I'm like, okay, where's your crystal ball? And they look at me like I got three heads. What are you talking about? Well, listen, you must have a crystal ball under your bed that says you're not going to get sick and going to have prescription drugs for the next year. Uh, so we don't know, right? So what happens two months later you come down with a, you know, a pre-existing condition where you need a tier three or tier four drug, you're gonna wish to God you had enrolled in Part D. And then secondly, of course, is the Part D penalties that you know you will be mm -hmm. avoiding as well. And also, one of my clients got into trouble uh, a month ago because they didn't realize when they turn 65, you gotta get off Obamacare, or known as the marketplace, right? And enroll in Medicare. So again, call the experts at Owen Insurance Group, let us, unravel the mysteries of Medicare and help guide you through that path and that journey. Uh, so Jackie, what's the next question? How much am I going to pay for this Medicare? Well, how much do you want to pay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nothing would be my answer. <laughs> so uh, seriously, it really depends on your income. Uh, so uh, right now, obviously, Medicare, if you are a high earner, uh, the government wants more of your money. Uh, if you earn less money, then obviously you know, we spoke about the uh, tax status. So if you're individual, uh, filing single, it's $85,000 a year. So if, you're, if your income is higher than that, or you're married, filing jointly, it's over $170,000. There's four tiers above the standard one thirty five fifty premium. The highest it can go if you're making, if you're uh, privileged to earning uh, three quarters of a million dollars or more, then you're going to be paying $460 a month for your Part B premium. Uh, also, uh, Part A, how much are you going to pay for Part A? So typically, uh, Part A is free for most people. If you are, uh, earn 40 quarters or 10 working years, you qualify for Part A. And that 
is equivalent to about $437 worth of premium that you get, right? So then uh, you gotta add part B, which it's, it's say you're making 85,000 or less if you're single, 170 or less if you're married, father and jointly. Your premium's gonna be 13550 So to give you an example, if you enroll in Medicare A and B, 13550 then you're gonna enroll in a Part D plan, which is say maybe 3350 for the Part D plan or less. Depends, it could be more, it could be less. Uh, but let's say 30, which is the average national premium for a Part D plan. And then you add a Medigap or a Medicare supplement plan. So that could be an average, let's say an average of uh, $225. So for less than $400, and let's say that Medicare supplement plan is plan F until January 1, 2020, if you're lucky to enroll by then then your Medicare plan total is less than $400. You're done. So basically no out-of-pocket expenses. And if you decide that you want to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan with a zero, a very low or zero premium, then basically you're going to pay the one thirty-five fifty dollars for your uh, Medicare Part B. So it kind of gives you an idea. If you want to run it by us, again, remember, call the number down below, 772-210-1020, and ask one of our experts to help you and guide you and answer any questions you might have. So question number four. So what choices do they have in Medicare when they enroll? Three choices. You can enroll in parts A and B and D. And those are the ones that are actually mandatory. B, you don't have to until you don't have insurance from your employer or things like that. But if, if you are uh, enrolling, at that time, A, B, and D. Now that is really not enough. That leaves you with a lot of out-of-pocket costs hanging. That's why there is supplemental insurance. So um, there are two ways of obtaining that. You can have your original Medicare parts A, B, and D, and a Medigap policy or a Medicare supplement. And that's what Gary was referring to part to uh, Plan F, although as of the beginning of the year, we're going to be talking about Plans G uh, and, and the other plans, but that is like the gold standard. Um, the third option is to enroll in Part C, which is a combination of A and D, A, B and D. And those are, um, Medicare Advantage plans. So those are the ones that are being advertised uh, mostly on TV and that uh, include other things than what Medicare covers, like silver sneakers and you know dental and vision and all of that. There is a fine balance in terms of what you should choose or what is best for each individual. It's definitely not a one size fits all. Right. The answer is different for every person, even sometimes within a couple, uh, a husband and wife. There could be different choices for both members of the family, depending on their needs, their circumstances, and the host of other um, variables. And, and a good point too, Jackie, is a, a lot of people are seeing these infomercials, and now that we're in the Medicare open enrollment period, you're going to see a plethora mm -hmm. of advertisements in the newspaper. You're going to see TV infomercials. You're going to have insomnia. You're going to be up in the morning watching, 2 o'clock in the morning, watching commercials on all the different carriers. And no, uh, don't bait me. I'm not going to mention them by name. But I'm going to tell you right now, do not fall prey to the temptation of enrolling in those plans because Again, Jackie is so correct. It's a, not a one-size-fits-all solution. So there's a lot of variables, and you just can't arbitrarily, you should not arbitrarily enroll in a Medicare plan without knowing hel the holistic approach. And that's what we're going to give you, okay? Right. It's important. And I always say, Jackie, it's important uh, that you make the right decision, the best decision the first time, mm -hmm. because that decision you make today can last you a lifetime. So really, it truly is important. Yeah. So... Uh, Jackie, question, oh, go ahead. I, I wanted to also say, very important, you cannot have both plans. You cannot have one of each. Let's say that you had a lot of money and you say, well, I just want to have, have it all, you know, like a smorgasbord. You cannot have a Medicare Advantage plan and a Medigap uh, supplement, supplemental policy. You have to choose one path or the other. And in 
again, because Gary said it's very important you choose right, because sometimes you go down one path and you can't go back the other way, or you can, but That's only right. if and or what happens. So it is really important that that first choice be an educated and well-informed choice. Amen. Question number five, Jackie. All right. So what if I am under 65, I haven't gotten there yet, and I am not eligible for Medicare, um, what are my options? What do I do for health insurance? You know, we get calls every day, folks that are not 65 yet, and like you, Jackie, you're saying, I wish I was 65 I wish, already, right? I do. Uh, I do. But I wish if, I were there. If you're between the ages of 60 and 64 in nine months, let's say, you're probably finding out, like the rest of America, is uh, Obamacare or the marketplace is too cost prohibitive. And, but there are alternatives. Uh, we can enroll those clients into a short-term medical plan. Mm -hmm. There are several options for that, and, and those plans have gotten better. Uh, I would say a year or two years ago, maybe not the best choice. But today, uh, they have gotten a lot better. And then also, uh, there are plans uh, called Bridge to Medicare. So again, if you're between 60 and 64 and uh, nine months, you could qualify for a Bridge to Medicare plan and for a premium, I believe as low as $135 a month for a bronze plan. So again, you have options, so don't get stuck, don't get uh, confused, and, and don't fall prey to those high premiums. Again, call the number below and consult with one of our professionals to help guide you and give you the best recommendations. It's most suitable for you, not for the charge carrier, That's but right. for you. That's correct. Jackie, correct. question number six. Uh, the client is asking, I just turned 65. Mm -hmm. I got my beautiful red, white, blue Medicare card. I got my Medigap card or my Medicare Advantage plan card. Now, what do I do? <laughs> well, that's a fantastic question. You should make an appointment with your doctor for the air quotes, welcome to Medicare visit. That is different than your annual physicals. It is a once in a lifetime, it's your welcome to Medicare, much more comprehensive exam. Don't miss out, because you have to do that within the first 12 months. And then following that, take advantage of the fantastic care you will have and follow up with your annual physicals, with all your tests, with your routine exams and um, cancer screenings and um, all of the preventive medicine tests. The reason pre we call it preventive is because we can't, you know, they, they don't prevent you from getting sick, but if something does happen and they catch it early, the chances of you doing fantastic are much, much better the earlier you catch things. So, you know, sticking your head in the sand is really not, not a good right idea. Answer. Not the right answer. Really not a good idea. I come that I, I cross that many, many times. And sometimes it's because people say, well, I don't have insurance. Now you do. Do not find excuses. Make sure you go to your regular routine exams and follow those those uh, screenings as prescribed. The doctors have studied for a very, very long time and they know why they're checking. So Stay healthy because when you're healthy, you're happy. Yeah. What, what if you're not happy, Jackie? Jackie, <laughs> I mean, if you're like, you know, you uh, come to a place in your life where all of a sudden you have depression. And so how does that affect clients on the, on the screens? Very good question too. And sadly, and for sad reasons, because things have not turned out rosy and Pollyanna, but truthfully, because we've always suffered from other ailments that are not physical, that have to do with our emotions and our mental health, Medicare will cover those benefits. Your insurance will cover those. And it is not a stigma anymore to say, I need help. That's you right. don't have to be cuckoo. You don't have to be loony to go to seek help, whether it's counseling or any of the options in the spectrum of mental health. That is something that is as important, if not more important than your physical yeah, health. Absolutely important, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I want to know, Gary, what is the difference between a Medicare supplement and uh, MAPD or Medicare Advantage Plan. MAPD stands for? Yes, Medicare, Medicare Advantage, Advantage Plan, so uh, with a prescription drug plan. So basically, this is probably one of the most important questions, and this is part of the segment here today, question number seven, where you gotta get right. 
I'm serious. You've got to get this right because there are so many people out there. Just today, someone asked me, I asked them what plan they had and they had no idea whether or not they were on a supplement plan. You, you, you've been there or a Medicare <laughs> yeah. Advantage plan. So, yeah. oh, they said, oh, I'm on a supplement plan. I said, let me see your card. Uh, give it up. Come on. Give me, let me see your card. And actually, they're not on a Medigap plan. Uh, they're on a Medicare Advantage plan. They've been on that plan for three years or four years. And my gosh, how much have Medicare Advantage plans changed in the last, not only three or four years, but in the last 12 months. Yeah. So it's important that you know exactly what you're enrolling in. So Medicare supplement, let's talk about that first. And I'll do the best I can to be brief. Uh, because Medicare supplement plans, they basically, like Jackie had alluded to earlier, it's a gold standard in Medicare. A Medicare supplement plan basically really gives you the flexibility and the freedom to choose to go where you want to go, right? Anywhere in the, world, in the country that accepts Medicare. So God forbid uh, you come down with a diagnosis, uh, a chronic diagnosis, and you want the best care possible, uh, and you want to, let's say, it's... Uh, MD Anderson, you can take your Medicare supplement plan and, and, and go and have the best care possible. Uh, and with a plan F, the Medicare supplement plan F, basically what Medicare doesn't cover, the plan F supplement plan covers basically 100%, so you have no out of pocket. Yes, you're gonna have a premium. Depending on where you are in the country, the premium for plan F on the west coast of Florida, turning 65 for a female is $179 a month. Down in Miami, it could be $252 a month. So it really depends on where you live. But it's important to take a serious look at a Medicare supplement plan versus a Medicare Advantage plan. So a lot of consumers today uh, are liking Medicare Advantage and are enrolling in Medicare Advantage plans be, uh, with a prescription drug plan because of the additional benefits and because of the low uh, to zero premium. Uh, so again, with Medicare Advantage, uh, you have uh, deductibles, you have co-pays, you have co-insurance, uh, some of the PPO, you have HMO, PPO, uh, PFFS, private fee for service, HMO, uh, health maintenance organization, preferred <laughs> provider organization, OMG, it's just too much, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, it's important, again, that we, we tailor these plans, we explain these plans, we educate our consumers what's best for you, because it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Uh, there are limitations to, to Medicare Advantage. It's important that you know the pros and the cons, right? So uh, again, call the number on the screen below and consult with one of our professionals so we can help guide you on the right path that's best for you. Because again, the decisions you make today, especially when you're turning 65, when you're in that open enrollment period, if you make the wrong decision, you may not be able to go back to a plan that you may want when something happens to your health down the road. So let's keep that in mind. So question number eight, uh, Jackie, PDP. All right, we, we, we're, we uh, have all these uh, acronyms. So health PDP, so what, how should a client enroll and why should they enroll in a PDP? And what is a PDP? Oh, good question. A PDP stands for Prescription Drug Plan. That is what supplements Part D. Remember we had talked about your first option is enrolling in Parts A and B and D, which is mandatory. But again, leaving that without any supplement exposes you to a lot of potential out-of-pocket expenses. So to supplement that insurance part of the medications is Plan D and the plans are called uh, prescription drug plans, PDP. Now, which one really depends on the medications you're taking or not taking? And that requires a little bit of scrutiny. So the best thing to do, again, is to leave it to the experts. Yes, you can totally do it yourself. And <laughs> Not to be recommended, though. Well, last year, just, uh, just last year, I have a friend who works in the industry, in the insurance industry, but not specialized in Medicare. And she thought she could handle it just fine. She did benefits her whole life. And literally two weeks before the deadline, she gave, gave me a call and said, can you help? <laughs> because she could not figure it out. It, it is confusing. I don't know if they designed this on purpose to be confusing. They even redesigned the medicare.gov website 
supposedly to make it easier and simpler. And just yesterday afternoon, um, one of my clients said, I'm going to turn 65 on January 27th. And I went to look at it and I have no idea what to do. So that's what we're here for, to help you figure things out. But a PDP is a, a prescription drug plan and you definitely have to enroll in one of those. That is mandatory. That's where you get that 1% uh, per month um, penalty if you don't. So let us help you figure that out. And, 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 and remember too, that if you're not taking any prescription drugs, then obviously it makes sense to enroll in the most economical plan that's out there. But uh, she's correct. I mean, not only does it take a little scrutiny, but it takes a lot of work on our part uh, to be able to input the information, the data mm -hmm. in, in the uh, Medicare.gov website and go through the list of carriers that have the plans available in your county and your specific zip code. And then based on the formulary that, that you're taking and the formulary that the carrier is providing for that plan sponsored year, uh, there's a lot of work. Uh, so it's important to get it right because if you put your head in the sand and you say, forget it, I'm not gonna mess with it this year, you could be doing yourself not only a disservice, but harming your pocketbook and your savings account if you don't have the right plan. One more thing about um, the PDPs or the prescription drug plans. Those we review with you every year because circumstances can change. And yes, you can change them every year, once a year. You have a window of time in which you want to make changes. So if your health changed in your medication lists changed up, down, or sideways, Anyway, you should do a review at least once a year when you have that chance so that you don't miss the boat for a whole other year to wait. And when can they? What is that time period, Jackie, that they can change? That is December 7th. Is that correct? October December 8th? 15th. Well, for... Um, the AEP? AEP, yes. <laughs> October 15th through? De October 15th through December she got the She got the date backward. That's correct. So, That's yeah, correct. so it's the... I was thinking about the end because... Because <laughs> <laughs> she wants to get to the end. <laughs> Trust me, by the time December 7th gets around, we're like exhausted. And so it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, question number nine, Jackie. What happens if I get diagnosed um, with a major illness... I don't like to say the C word, just not so, to paint it out there, but if I have a heart condition or cancer, can I go to any doctor I want? That's the $64 million question. And that's what I said earlier. It's important, guys, you gotta get this right. And gals, it's important that you make the right decision the first time because the decision you make today could last a lifetime. Um, we had, in fact, two clients last week alone. A gentleman called me. And, uh, and, a, and a lady called me a day after he called. Uh, they had gotten diagnosed with cancer and was on was was not on a Medicare supplement plan, oh. and unfortunately uh, was not getting the care uh, that they needed. And so, unfortunately, uh, once you have uh, those conditions and you're not on a Medicare supplement plan, you're done. You are not going to qualify to be on it. Typically, uh, you will not qualify to be on a Medicare supplement. There, there are. Uh, some SEPs, uh, and unfortunately, most people will not qualify for those SEPs. So, again, talking to a professional Medicare planner who will sit down and give you a holistic approach to your Medicare planning that's really, really important. But uh, a Medicare supplement plan yes, you can take your Medicare supplement plan and you can go to the top three cancer hospitals in the nation, in the world, right? MD Anderson, number one. Uh, Sloan Kettering, number two, uh, for cancer treatment. And then Johns Hopkins, number three. So you can certainly take your Medicare supplement plan, see the best oncologist, go to the best hospital. And that's the difference, right? And Cleveland Clinic and Mayo Clinic. Yes. Every one of the So that's big important. Dogs. Yes, choose, choose the right plan. Whereas Medicare Advantage plans, you've got networks. And some of the, the uh, uh, top uh, cancer hospitals will not accept Medicare Advantage. So again, choose the right plan. Not uh, It's not a one uh, size fits all. Mm -hmm. So uh, last question for you. How does this AEP affect me and what am I required to do to take action? What is AEP and what do I have to do about it? So again, October uh, 15th, right now we're the month of October. So we're in the 
AEP, the annual election period, or the Medicare open enrollment period till December the 7th. Like last year, I got five calls on December the 7th, believe it or not, I hadn't made an election yet, and now they're frantically trying to do something. Please, don't do that to please, us. Please, please. Please don't. don't do that to us. <laughs> so uh, if you're on a Medicare supplement plan, you have to sit back, relax, have a margarita. There's nothing you need to do, okay? Uh, or have a single malt scotch, uh, but mm -hmm. um, or a nice cab, Cabernet or wine or something. There's yeah. nothing you need to do if you're on a Medicare supplement plan. If you're on a Part D or a Medicare Advantage plan, uh, I would say that it would be prudent uh, to have uh, an agent. Uh, you're, if you have an agent you're working with now, uh, call them up and ask them, hey, th these are the drugs uh, that I'm taking for this year. Because the formulary changes every year. Mm -hmm. Medicare Advantage plans changes every year. Every year you're going to get an A. If you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to get a, what's called an A knock in the mail. It's called the Annual Notice of Change. Most people just take it up and... Don't even read it. They don't understand it. So call the professionals at Owen Insurance Group. If you don't have an agent, you're not working with an agent, you haven't heard from the agent in two or three years, come on. Call the professionals at Owen Insurance Group, 772-210-1020, and I promise you that we're going to provide you the, the, uh, the right information and, again, the holistic approach and guide you down that path to make the right decisions. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this segment because we've run out of time, Jackie. That, that, I told you to go by fast. So uh, hopefully you like us, you'll love us, uh, you'll follow us. And if you have any questions, uh, uh, chat those down below, send those to us, or better yet, call us at 772-210-1020. And uh, Jackie, there's one thing I want you to tell the audience before we go in Spanish. Uh, and where you're from originally? What country were you born in? I was born in the tiny country of Uruguay. Pretty cool. Wedged in the uh, beneath the belly of Brazil and Argentina. Tiny, tiny country that I love. But um, I I've been in the United States since I am 18 years of age, and I absolutely love this country and I'm proud to be an American. And what are you saying in Spanish to your friends out there in the uh, United States? Lo que sea que necesite, que tenga que ver con Medicare o con cualquier tipo de pregunta eh, con respecto a sus seguros, seguros de vida, seguros de salud, seguros de cualquier tipo de pregunta, estoy siempre, siempre a las órdenes. No tengo horarios de trabajo fijo. Eh, me pueden llamar, dejar un mensaje o mandar un correo electrónico y siempre les voy a contestar. Si estoy ocupada en ese momento, por supuesto, denme una chance, <ríe> unas horitas, pero estoy a disposición y eh, he estudiado durante muchos años y continúo estudiando porque esto es un tema muy complicado y así es la vida, a mí me interesa y es mi pasión ayudar a la gente. So I got a few of those words. Um, no tango. Uh, pero, uh, mucho gracias. So anyway, I know a few little words anyway. So, but enough to get in trouble. Don't call me. No, I'm in enough trouble. Don't don't worry about that. <laughs> but anyway, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, call two one zero seven seven two two ten ten twenty. Call one of the professionals where we simplify insurance and financial planning so you can enjoy the very best of life that you truly deserve. Take care, everybody. Goodbye.